prepare this the R for now. Will now be recorded. Okay, I'm recording the session as well so that if you want later on, I can certainly pass this on to you as well. Okay. All right. So uh, before I move ahead, uh, before I talk about you know the misconceptions which which I've kind of just opened up for you to read, I'll quickly uh, introduce myself. My name is Kushagra Singhanya. Uh, people call me Kush. Uh, uh, I've been uh, working as a data scientist for about seven years now. Seven to eight years I've been in this field of data science, and uh, overall uh, I have about ten plus years of experience. Okay. Uh, I'm an IT Delhi graduate. Uh, you know, passed out uh, about ten eleven years back and uh, have been uh, have been uh, very passionate about uh, you know passionate about data science so past six seven years there's been a lot of a lot of things that i've been doing in this field uh, these days uh, we're not just doing a training on data science that is something which we really love to do is why we still do it and we you know we're very uh, happy to help a lot of people get a uh, make a good transition into into their careers a lot of you are stuck in your career right so i uh, i've seen a few people while, while i was working back then uh, you know with two years three years four years five years experience and you know working bits and pieces into different technologies and uh, um, you not really you know up, up at anything and you feel that uh, you are uh, you're you're you know you're not up to the mark you think that uh, you you're not in a certain technology you're not really le learned a lot of things and and the life is just drifting on right and you you're looking for something which can help you move ahead uh, for all of you know those people who who feel you know something of that is required um, data science is one field which has come up very strongly right so we we do train people a lot we have a specific team which works on projects in data science apart from projects we also do a bit of consulting so so there are multiple areas that dim dimensionless works in Okay, this session is all about uh, making you aware of how to make a career in data science. You know, a lot of misconceptions, a lot of uh, myths about it. I'll try and clarify some of them. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to add value to the session. Okay, so on that note, let's get started. Uh, next one hour, uh, 50 minute shoot is is what we'll expect to be to be pretty good. Okay, um, so I'm sure you you are able to see my screen and able to read through this. So it says big data is is same as data science. A lot of people feel that big data and data science are one and the same thing, which is uh, which to be true is is uh, I mean uh, for the matter of fact that's not true, right? So that there are two different things. Uh, data science is all about learning R and Python. It's all about knowing programming languages. Uh, which again is the biggest myth in data science. So if you especially for people who in IT industry, right? So we, since we are working with a lot of code, we are doing a lot of uh, programming every day. We, I mean, that is that is our bread and butter. That's what we do day and day in and day out. And uh, we feel if you know that you become a data scientist and which is, you know, which is so far away from truth that I cannot even tell you. So Python and R are important aspects of data science, but they're not just, I mean, it's its not just about that. There's so much more to data science than R and Python. Similarly, I need to be an expert programmer to work as a data scientist. Again, people can verify that it's not about coding skills. It's more about uh, logic, right? So those who have been learning with me can easily vouch for that, that it's more about logic. Basic syntax you need to understand if you spend 30, 40 hours learning things, you have to go back and you know see what is being done always so there has to be a bit of hands-on more hands-on you do the better uh, it is for you okay uh, then you need to have a degree in uh, is to to get to become a good data scientist again data scientist is not about degrees I'll, I'll you know buzz this myth also it's more about your practical knowledge then a lot of people feel that uh, you need to have worked in data related technologies right um, you, if somebody is a tester, they cannot transition to data science. If somebody is from a say .NET uh, .NET background, he's he's a .NET developer or a Java developer, they cannot become into and uh, come to data science. Similarly, people from quality, they feel they cannot get in there, right? Or business analysts, program managers, a lot of people have uh, misconception that since they are working in a certain field, they cannot get into data science because it's all about data and they don't know about data. Okay, so that's again one of the very important misconceptions that people have about data science. Uh, then, when you get started in data science, you need to be aware of everything: data science, data analytics, big data, artificial intelligence. Without that, you cannot get a job, or you cannot get a good job in data science. Both of that is the thought is is incorrect. Both of that is wrong. That you need to know everything when you get started. When you get started, you need need to know only certain specific thing. Once you're good with that certain specific thing, you can be, uh, you can easily work as a data scientist. Okay. 
all right uh, then uh, next is uh, i need to be a certified data scientist professional without certification you don't get a job in data science uh, that's something i'll talk about towards the end right uh, that is also which is a very very big myth okay all right so i'll, I'll try and bust some of these myths uh, mostly majorly i'll try and bust each of that and i'll try and you know first introduce you to data science and with that we'll be able to know what uh, you know what needs to be done and what needs to be avoided fair enough okay first things first when you talk of data science right data science is very popular now everybody has heard of the term data science artificial intelligence is the buzzword today big data analytics is the buzzword today right so there are multiple words there that that you hear machine learning again is a word that you and i hear on a on a daily basis right every day we read about these topics um but do we clearly understand the difference between these things what data science is what ai is what ml is but what analysis of data means what data mining is are we aware of that no i am not no okay let's just try and okay those who are not able to hear me can uh, rejoin i'll just put that please rejoin those who have, have are not able to uh, hear me they can certainly rejoin okay give me a second i need if i speak they still can't hear me right so okay let's try try and uh, you know uh, understand about uh, about each of that okay so the term data science data mining will will take one word at a time and then try and you know break break that let's first start with uh, data analysis okay how many of you know what data analysis is simple very straightforward one term is data the other term is analysis if you combine both on both of that that becomes data analysis right so any kind of analysis that you do any analysis that you do wh what do you mean by analysis everybody understands the meaning of analysis right you're trying to explore something so you have some data if you're trying to explore that data if you're trying to analyze the data if you're trying to understand various aspects various if you're trying to draw some information out of that data the process of doing that is data analysis the field that is associated with analysis of data is called analytics okay the field is called analytics the world is the word is data analysis okay the process is data analysis when you do data processing when you analyze the data that is data analytics clear now how exactly data analysis is done what are different kinds of analysis so why are we analyzing the data there are multiple reasons why we analyze the data one of the reasons why we analyze the data is we want to understand what has what is happening right so we are collecting data suppose uh, there's a small shop which is selling certain goods okay it's a simple kirana shop which is selling certain goods right now that Kir kirana shop owner is also doing data analysis right he is taking care of his profits he is taking care of his losses that is happening on a daily basis or on a monthly basis he is trying to understand what kind of inventory does he have right for a certain specific uh, item does he have the inventory or does he need to you know ask the dealer or the distributor to send out that particular uh, item to them yes correct so any kind of analysis right that that is a simple example of a kirana store it can be it can also be for uh, any big big or organization right so whenever you are trying to analyze the data it you have wherever you have data wherever you have numbers wherever you have data coming in you can do the analysis of data and with that you will infer something you want to take some insight and then use that insight to to perform a task to take a decision right now that that analysis of data which is reactive which means something has happened and now you want to know what has already happened for example the sales in 10 different regions for a given product say for example pepsi wants to know uh, what was the sales of uh, its particular product say pepsi bottles across maharashtra okay that it can get in a report it can have a report where this detail can be had right you and i 
somebody who's working with that data can publish a report saying that okay in the month of january february march i mean different quarters you had different sales or the sale numbers number of units that were sold can be known right based on that now the business will think whether the number is good number is bad why it is good why it is bad all of that analysis can be done only once you know that there is something right so when you talk of basic analysis where you're reacting to something has already happened that's your descriptive and inferential analysis descriptive means you're describing what has already happened inferential means you're trying to infer on why something is happening so if the sales went down what was the reason for the sales to go down whether it was because of the you know market situations the you know the uh, rains came up all of a sudden you know there's so many things that you can talk of so the weather was uh, you know pretty pretty cloudy and uh, uh, summers was not all that great therefore pepsi sales were down can be one simple reason or the availability of stock was not there then because of that the sales actually uh, competitor took up took away the lot of sales for us right so when you talk of any analysis of data any kind of data you have if you're trying to analyze the data that's your data analysis fine any kind of analysis that you're doing on data is data analysis it can be of various types it can be simple descriptive it can be inferential which is i mean understanding about so here if you talk of this part this is about understanding here it's more about reporting you're trying to create report to know what has happened here you're trying to do basic analysis on why something happened right so you're trying to understand um the relationship between various factors okay i'll talk about this relationship between factors okay so output variable how the input different input variables are impacting the output variables once you have that understanding you can know this that that's about data analysis again there can be analysis where we want to figure out what can happen tomorrow right like now you don't want things to happen and take a decision you want to proactively figure out what can happen tomorrow on that basis you want to take a decision today right so that tomorrow's customer suppose you have certain customers which you want to as a telecom subscriber telecom vendor uh, not subscriber as a telecom service provider you want to know how many of your customers are going to port out to the next uh, company right so if you if you can get those numbers if you can get to know what kind of people are trying to port out of your business so you are idea and you want to know how many people will move out of your network next month and if that number is 20 lakh people you would want to do something about it right correct and then you want to figure out what kind of pattern people actually move out right what kind of things do they showcase is it that they call customer care look for some offers they don't get it they move out or they they have lot of network problem then they drop out so you you need to figure out what are the reasons why they are they are moving out based on which you can predict okay at this point the network is bad there is a very high chance that people will move out of our network so let's try and do something about it right so you're trying to do things beforehand that's your predictive modeling that's what data science is all about so data analysis is all about any kind of analysis that you do on data is data analysis process is analytics data science per se when you move towards the realm of predictive analysis what is predictive analysis where you are trying to predict a value okay you are interested in trying in predicting a value on what can happen okay correct you are trying to figure out what can happen tomorrow that's your predictive analysis okay and then based on predictions if you can prescribe a solution that's prescriptive that's something which is still not that prevalent we are still working primarily on predictive analysis right now why is it that data science or predictive analytics has become so popular today see if you have heard of the term business intelligence how many of you have heard, heard of the term business intelligence heard of the term business intelligence guys yes no yes yes, yes. okay yes. so yes. what happens in business intelligence you are trying to you have some data you try and clean and transform that data once the data is cleaned and transformed you put into a warehouse and then once the data is is in a structured format you try and generate reports with that data correct you try and generate reports with that data right so any kind of reporting that you do is part of business intelligence right so till now for the past 10 15 years 
the businesses were focusing on what has already happened and why something is happening so real time cases and, and what has already happened that's where reporting was a key area and all the it companies we were doing a lot of reporting even now there's a lot of projects where you know bi people work they are trying to work with uh, uh, creating reports and understanding how it can help businesses okay but now this is not enough right only reporting data is not enough now the world is changing you want to have the com competition is so so much we are generating so much data the processing power is so good that now you want to utilize that and then you what you want to do is you want to come ahead uh, come up with uh, with ways and techniques where you can not just talk talk about uh, how data analysis is happening you're also talking about uh, uh, what can happen tomorrow and then you want to take a decision based on that right so if your customer can come up with a new business model tomorrow you don't want to wait for that customer to come up with a business model tomorrow you want to start taking a decision today so that you can you can um, you can counter their their impact beforehand right similarly you don't want to have your customers leave uh, you know leave your network and then getting them back would be a major challenge you, you that that's a more difficult task to do okay so when you talk of data science it's all about uh, uh, it's all about if you talk of data scientist profile right i'll just talk about this also in a while so when you talk about data science it's about predictive modeling right and how will you predict the values how would you create a predictive model to be able to create a predictive model to be able to you know uh, know what can happen tomorrow what you try and do you try and see the pattern in data your primary interest is to see what kind of patterns exist in your data right if you are able to figure out what kind of pattern exists in data which means i told you right if you know that customers are asking for a lot of offers and those people move out so if you see there are a lot of offers being you know customers call you and they say uh, you know i'm looking for a certain offer and they don't get that offer they they move out of your network so you would not want that to happen if you see a customer has called twice or thrice for some offer you try and give them some offer to retain that customer before he actually moves out right so something of that sort can can again be a trend that you see okay uh, what are you trying to do in data science in data science or in as a data scientist uh, your primary job is to be able to solve a business problem okay your job is to be able to solve a business problem how do you solve a business problem so for a given business problem you will collect the data a lot of processing pre processing of data will happen basically you are trying to understand some kind of a pattern in your data to be able to get this pattern in your data what you try and do you use something called statistical algorithms okay now why why can't we do this analysis manually also we could do this manually also right i can just take a set of data and ask people to you know just look at the data and say that there is a pattern but imagine if if you have say 150 um, values right say two variables only variable a and variable b and for these 50 for these a and b you have some say 10 20 15 20 values you can see the values you can see the pattern if it is 50 values you spend some more time understand that there exists a pattern correct yes or no but if you had uh, 100 variables right so until 100 different variables and now you want to see the impact of these 100 variables on a variable y okay there is an out, output variable some output variable that you have you want to understand how this output variable will change when these values change um you know accordingly so if you have to do that if you have to see the impact manually humanly it is not possible for us to do that right we need to use a lot of statistics we need to do that a lot of times before we can actually get to this part and to be able to get to this part um, we will need a lot of effort right so we don't we don't want to do that manually you don't want to have a specific rule because there might not be a specific rule here correct in that case what you try and do you use something called statistics or machine learning okay so what is data science data science is the process wherein you have a business problem you're trying to solve that business problem by understanding the patterns from your existing data correct and how do you find patterns from data by applying statistics 
more precise answer would be statistical algorithms, which is machine learning algorithms. So you apply machine learning algorithms on data that gives you an output, which is called a data model. Right? This pattern is represented in the form of something called a data model. Okay, so the data model that you create, correct, is the output of a machine learning algorithm. Okay, and how do you apply this machine learning on data? You use various tools or platforms like R, Python, SAS, TensorFlow, so on and so forth. You have multiple libraries, multiple tools which help you apply statistics and machine learning on data. Are you all following with this till, till this point? How data science is different from data analysis, right? So data science, if you solve predictive analytics, that area of analysis of data, which deals with predictive analysis is data science. The person who does that part is data scientist. And uh, here we are concerned with what, what will happen tomorrow. We want to proactively solve a business problem rather than waiting for something to happen. Correct? Everybody with me this on this and how exactly do you do that? Your primary job is to be able to create a data model and to be able to create a data model, which is nothing but a patterns in your set of data. You use machine learning or statistics and you apply machine learning on data using various platforms. Are we good till this point? Yes. 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 Okay. So uh, Statistics actually is a very important component in a data scientist profile. Okay, you cannot become a data scientist without the knowledge of statistics, right? Somebody there was a myth there that you need to know only R and Python. So it's just just the you know tools part that we are talking about a lot of majorly it's about machine learning and statistics. If you don't know that you will not be able to become a data scientist. Sure. Okay, now let's just uh, move on. Now uh, the first myth, sorry, the first myth I was trying to break here was big data is same as data science. Let's just focus on that also now. So a lot of how many of you feel that big data and data science is same thing? No, no. Different? Yeah, different. Totally different. Totally different things. Okay. Yeah. And how is but okay. uh, but okay, we one, use one. little bit of uh, big data in data scientists, data science. I'll, I'll talk about it. Yeah, you correct. You correct on that part. Okay, so let's just talk about a couple of things here. So when you talk of big data uh, or data science profile, when you want to get into this field, who should get in there? How you should get in there? I'll talk about a lot of those things. Okay, so do, just hold on for one and a half hours. Uh, you will get to learn a lot of new things. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. So uh, let's move on. So I was talking about uh, machine learning and big data, right? So there are two different technologies, right? Big data is a very different technology and data science is a very different technology. And there's something called big data analytics, which is uh, which is here. I'll talk about each of this. So when you are getting started in data science, right? You need to understand that there's a profile which is about data handling and there's another profile which is about data processing. Okay, if you are somebody who is only concerned with how to handle data, how to store so much data which is being generated and how quickly to retrieve it. Um, you are primarily focused on a big data developer profile. Okay, so you get a data, a data engineers profile or a big data Hadoop developer profile. When you when you are trying to get into big data, your primary job is to be able to handle the data, right? It's a very technical profile. It is a, a little a very code oriented profile, right? It involves a lot of coding. Um, the data scientist profile. Sorry, the I'm really sorry. The big data engineer profile. Okay, but when you talk of data scientist profile, as I mentioned some time back, it is more about cre understanding the pattern. It's about pattern recognition using which you will try and solve the business problem. So data modeling, process, pattern recognition, uh, processing of data that becomes an important portfolio of a data scientist. This is not a technical profile. This is a lot of business and a tech. I mean, you need a bit of technical skills, but I would say it's leaning more on the business side than on the technical side. So if you are trying to become a data scientist, if you feel you want to become a data scientist, a data scientist is somebody who is focused on uh, on data modeling part, right? He is somebody who solve is keen on business problem solving, right? But he needs to have a bit of technical skills to be able to get to the output. Clear? 
and then there is also a profile called a data analyst profile so somebody who does this analysis right i was talking about this part data analysis this part right so somebody who is doing this analysis who is creating reports who is working with sql server who is working with the tableau click view business intelligence all of those people are primarily data data analyst somebody might be working with excel and doing and doing analysis of data that person is also a a data analyst somebody who, who understands how analysis of data is to be done but he does not understand how predictive modeling is done. only understands how to create reports out of the data which is present clear are we good till this point everyone yes okay yes, yes. so data yes. analyst data scientist and data engineer three different profiles that you have you not everything is same right these are three different people working on three different areas of uh, business okay then there is some there is a person again data scientist who can work on very large sets of data so somebody who's a data scientist you are a data scientist you understand how data science works but you are not working on small data you're also trying to work with very large sets of data which is nothing but big data if you are in that realm then um, it's about uh, you you are somebody who needs to know big data as well now how much big data you need to know or should you learn big data first should you learn data science first so a data it a big data a person working with big data is a big data analytics is primarily a data scientist so you need to first become a data scientist before before you can get to a, a big data scientist profile or somebody big data analytics profile because a, a big data analytics profile also considers about 90% of the skill set or 85% i mean to be you know more uh, on that more precise i think 85% of the skill set is still uh, the machine learning algorithms the understanding of now you're just doing what you're changing the tools with which you are applying the machine learning on data the interpretation remains same the concepts of statistics the concepts of machine learning the concepts of modeling remain the same you still have to create a good data model you still have to uh, report your your findings but now since you're working on large data which a single system cannot hold you would try and use a more a bit of big data tools like spark is something which is an important tool for a important part for a big data analytics professional right within that you have specific packages in r and python like spark r py spark which work which help you work on those uh, part okay so this needs a bit more technical skills as compared to only a pure play data scientist profile but still it's it's more of a, or it's 90% of a data scientist profile and less of the about 10% of extra tools that you need to work on is it making sense right big data and data science moving on yes any question no problem sir right we are good okay yeah we are good now let's just talk about this uh so we have, we have, what we have seen is we understand uh, AI. We understand. Sorry, we have not talked about AI. Let me just talk about AI also. That's also one of the very commonly used terms, and a uh, lot of you are really confused with that. Okay. So you would have heard of the term data and artificial intelligence, and I'm sure everybody thinks that they want to become a, you know, you want to get into artificial intelligence. You want to become an expert in this, right? At least many of you would what certainly want to be there. Now, if I if you're somebody who feels that you know you want to get into the the area of artificial intelligence let's first understand what is mean right so artificial intelligence is nothing but you are providing intelligence to a to a machine right so if you are providing intelligence to a machine that is your artificial intelligence in in pure play nutshell now but this artificial intelligence this intelligence that you're providing to machine can be of two types one is rule based intelligence the second is um second is through machine learning i'll just talk about this so it's it's not rule based it's it's machine learning the rules on its own okay um so if you take this realm suppose this is ai within that you have something called machine learning and within that something called deep learning okay three different terms so this is sorry i'll just incorrectly put that if you take this as ai everything is ai this is your machine learning and this is your deep learning okay 
So let, let's just focus on this once again. This is important. Okay, just pay a little more attention here. Now, when I say artificial intelligence can be rule based intelligence or can be machine learning, there are two things to it, right? Now, any kind of automation that you're doing, right? If you are asking the machine, we are saying we're making a machine intelligent. What does that mean? That machine can perform an intellectual task, right? You're asking the machine, you're empowering the machine to perform an intellectual task, um, or you're automating this, right? So any kind of automation that you're doing where the machine is able to perform an intellectual intellectual task that is artificial intelligence. Okay, if your machine is able to perform an intellect intellectual task, it is your uh, that comes under the purview of artificial intelligence. So if you remember in 90s also when we were, you know, not sure how many of you were grown up then if you were using computers in back in 90s chess as a game was still present there right we could play chess on our systems back in 90s also right now that chess that the machine was you know there was that uh, you could play with with the computer even now you have those games right so you can play with chess with computer so machine was taking or making certain moves right and chess is not chess, chess is primarily considered a intellectual uh, game right but at that point in time what was there there were certain rules people had created rules for machine to work in a certain way if the other person is doing this you can do this if the other person is doing this so you actually had to feed machine a hell lot of rules right numerous amount of rules needed to be fed into the machine and at times you still could miss out certain rules right so we were creating rules to perform a task rules means what simple if you are given two values a plus b give out c so this addition is what needs to be done was fed to the machine correct now this was rule based intelligence that also comes under artificial intelligence but this intelligence is not something that we are very concerned with that that is not something which everybody is very uh, you know concerned about we are more concerned about the machine learning based uh, based intelligence that the machine will have okay now when i say the machine learning based intelligence that the machine will have what does it mean so you don't provide rules to the machine right what you provide you provide the data you provide the answer let machine devise the rule on its own right let machine devise the rules by itself that's what machine learning actually does okay so you provide the input okay this in this case in the case of this input this was the output in the case of this input this was the output and let machine figure out what is the relationship between the input and the output variable it will decide the route for yourself for itself are you with me everyone yes yes yeah yes so right so what is happening artificial intelligence means rule based but when you don't want it to be only rule based you want to restrict it to where machine is able to work on a specific thing correct so this is your uh, ai this is ml so specific part of ai where you are making the machine create its own rules that's machine learning within that when you work with specific kind of machine learning uh, algorithms which is also known as neural networks neural networks so when you're working with specific machine learning algorithm that is neural networks within that you can have cnn ann and rnn so just take this for now uh, which is convolutional artificial and, and recurrent so different kind of neural networks are there and within that it's not that all there can be neural network here also so if you have input you have one layer of processing and you have a output that's still machine learning yeah, yeah that you can certainly leave and that's perfectly all right uh, so um, you already part of my training batch so i don't need to worry about you okay sorry so i was saying if you have certain input you are processing the data and then you have you're providing certain output then um if there's only one layer here right so there's only one layer that in which the processing happened that's still neural networks i mean there can be neural networks uh, okay neural networks again is a specific type of algorithms where you try and see how your brain functions you try and map it in the form of an algorithm 
so so those kind of algorithms are neural network algorithms i'm not going to depths of this maybe this will be covered tomorrow in depth in machine learning session right tomorrow we have a session again from 4 to 6 which is only on machine learning so i'm not talking much on machine learning you'll see in tomorrow session will be a much more depth of this okay so coming back here for now so if you talk of machine learning specific layer it can be one layer but if you go into multiple layers where you're making the machine work in different layers of uh, uh, of neural networks right so if you ask the machine to work in say 10 different layers for different combinations you can have various <laughs> that part of machine learning that specific part of machine learning is called deep learning okay and in deep in that deep learning uh, in that deep learning algorithm when you work with deep learning algorithms um, you are trying to again there are a lot of restrictions when you work with deep learning so you need to have a lot of processing power the input data that you are feeding feeding to the machine right i said data uh, output and then the rules come out right so the input data that you feeding to the machine that also needs to be very very high it it used to be a large amount of data so if if you give small amount of data to the machine it will not be able to perform the task well okay uh, so that that's again a problem when you work with deep learning so it has it needs a lot of processing power it needs a lot of data without that it will not be able to give you a good output fair enough so deep learning is not required not ex, uh, not uh, suggested for anybody to get started with you need to have a good comfort level in machine learning once you are sure of how machine learning works once you know okay this is i'm pretty good with machine learning algorithms say 15 20 different algorithms and then you can focus on specific deep learning algorithms okay uh, so that's again one of the suggestion that i have because people try and learn everything they say okay i want to go into deep learning i want to learn big data analytics i want to learn machine learning and then they end up with nothing okay is this picture clear how ai ml and deep learning are different so ai is entire spectrum machine learning specific rule based and within that when you work with very specific algorithms where which needs a lot of data that that constitutes your um, ai and and deep learning okay let's quickly move on okay i think uh, something missing here one sec so i've talked about data scientist profile data engineer profile and a data analyst profile i've talked about what machine learning data science data analytics ai and big data analytics are and we also know that big data and data science are two different things we also understand that statistics is a key component in a data scientist profile only r and python are are not enough fair enough till this point can we move on okay let's move on then now what are the skill sets that is required to become a data scientist okay all of you are trying to become a data scientist correct so what are the different skill sets that you need to have if you want to become a data scientist okay let's focus on that part that if you want to become a data scientist what are the different skill sets that you should have fine so before i talk about skill set i'll just talk about prerequisite right prerequisite to a data scientist profile okay this is important for people who feel that they are stuck in in their career right so if you feel you are stuck in your career you feel that logically you are good you know how to work with things but somehow in your life you have you know couple of years you have worked in one technology some of time you worked in another technology you got stuck into a support project uh, you know you you not really being able to add a lot of value to your profile and you still feel that you are not getting enough pay packages for yourself um, and you want to move out of that and you know make a career Uh, listen to this point carefully so when you talk of prerequisite for a data scientist profile the prerequisite for a data scientist profile is only this much that you should be comfortable with numbers okay you should be somebody who is comfortable with numbers okay now when i say you should be comfortable with numbers what does exactly what does it exactly mean it primarily means that if i give you a set of data if i give you a set of data you should not feel uh, uh, you know ever you should not be averse to that data right you should not feel uh, that what what have i got i don't want to work with this data right so if you are given a problem if you are given a problem uh, you should be able to work with that problem you should be able to solve that problem 
okay so if you are able to solve that problem if you like problem solving you might not be able to solve the problem let's let's just kind of decipher this even one level further so if you like problem solving if you are comfortable with numbers if you feel you like logical reasoning right you want to work with logical things you want to you know reason out things you are somebody who who does not want to just take things as it is you don't want to um, you know you okay let me put it in a different way you are comfortable with uh, comfortable with say puzzles so if i give you a puzzle if i give you a riddle to solve now you feel that okay there is some some something inside this problem and if i try and solve this problem you feel satisfied after that right but even if you are not able to solve the problem at least you give your 100% to you try hard to decipher the logic which is present in that in that puzzle if you are somebody who likes doing this if you are comfortable with numbers if you like analysis of data even if you have worked with excel and you are okay with it data science can be a career option okay but if you feel this is something that you really don't like you only want to do programming within that also you you put in lo logics right but if you are somebody who is not comfortable with a lot of logic things if you're not you know very keen on that data science would be a difficult field for you why i'm saying that is because when you work as a data scientist day in and day out you are working to solve business problems right so business problem solving is an important part right and to be able to solve imagine you have a problem right you there's a there's a so you you have some problem in in your life right it can be you are your standard stranded in a place where there's a you know where you have you don't have specific things now you you put in all your efforts to ensure that you are able to come out of that situation right that's what we do so when you are working with data science the most important prerequisite to work in data science is that you should be somebody who is comfortable with problem solving if you are into that realm right whether you are program manager project manager data scientist business analyst tester uh, developer working in support projects applications irrespective of whichever your profile be if you are comfortable with problem solving you can make a career in data science okay and th there will be certain other steps that need to be followed but this is something which is important and if you talk about prerequisite to our course i'll just talk about that uh, when we come to the course part are we good till this point anybody has a question uh, this is something where i get few questions so anybody has a question i'm more than happy to answer that for now only for this part for now no we're good okay let's move on then so now now coming to the skill set for a data scientist right now in this part again i'll be busting few myths one is as i said uh, that you want to uh, work with data science okay so the imp imp i'll use my ppt also for now let's see so there are uh, different skill sets there are different things that you need to learn and this skill set is not when you start learning data science this is the skill sets i'm talking about is when you apply for a job as a data scientist right when you apply for a job as a data scientist at that point in time what is the skill set that you should have i am focusing on excuse me i am focusing on that part for now okay so there are three things here one is the understanding of domain second is the programming knowledge and the third thing is the knowledge of statistics okay let's just focus on you know what is the to what extent what what is important right we'll focus on all of that first let's talk about domain what do you mean by domain domain knowledge if i'm using the term domain knowledge anybody who can tell me what does it mean it can be financial domain insurance domain healthcare exactly. domain like yeah. this exactly correct okay so when you talk of domain you're primarily talking either about an industry or you are talking about a first function business function okay so hr can also be a domain operations can also be a domain yes uh, means exactly means what kind of data you are handling it will be domain 
yeah so the problem when you talk of so suppose you're working currently you're working in a retail project right you understand how retail industry works your client gives you certain problems to solve some certain code to write you are handling their processes so if you are from if you have the knowledge of a given domain it helps you solve the problem pertaining to that domain okay correct so what is domain knowledge domain knowledge is nothing but the knowledge about a particular industry or about a business function now this is not compulsory for everybody to have that's first thing it is important for people who have a lot of experience if you have 10 years 12 years 8 years that kind of an experience domain will become important if you have less than that don't worry about domain you can leave the domain part aside and you you can still be very good with it okay so the percentage of importance of domain will keep increasing with the amount of experience that you carry as you have more and more experience domain will have more weightage initially it's less than 5% okay all right now what is domain knowledge it's more about business understanding you need to understand what are the different processes which happen in a given business area and if you have the uh, knowledge of that why is that required basically why do you think we we require domain knowledge what is the need for domain knowledge to solve the problem to understand the problem correct more important to solve the problem it is to understand the problem right so if i want to understand a business problem suppose i give you a problem about oil and gas sector that what kind of you know temperature and pressure should be there and stuff uh, half of the terms you would not understand right if you're not from that industry correct so if if i'm giving you a problem which you are not aware of if you are not understanding what what the business is saying how will you even empathize with that problem if you know okay for a given business problem business process again there can be various sub process so somebody said finance as a domain right within finance you can have a uh, uh, corporate finance you can have uh, you know credits you can have uh, uh, equities you i mean you can have uh, various uh, you know various branches of that and within that you can have sub branches you can have banking as a as a domain within banking you can have uh, say loans as a department you can have retail banking as something which other thing could be corporate banking right so you cannot know everything it's not expected you to for you for for uh, for you to know everything you need to know certain specific things whichever problem business area that you're working with if you understand how the processes are there what kind of value chain exists what kind of problems do you generally face what are the things that you work with if you have knowledge about that that helps you understand the problem better also that helps you understand what kind of data could be important right so data um, a lot of in knowledge about that could tell you okay this data can be important let's just pull this data out. or where exactly the data can be found that again can be known if you have a uh, knowledge of the domain again i'm saying this is important for say 8 plus years of experience if you have less experience don't worry too much about domain okay more important is the statistics and programming i'll just come to stats first or let let's talk about programming first okay now this still has certain which is it 30% weightage because these are the tools programming or I'll just say tools as well here so within this i'll cover multiple you need to know multiple things sql is something that you need to know when you apply as a data scientist because when you are trying to analyze the data it's not that a data engineer is always available to give you the data the data might be residing in some other place in some databases so you are expected to be able to at least fetch that data right so basic sql queries you don't need to be an expert in sql if you know basic sql queries for which you need to if you spend say 4 or 5 days learning basic sql that might be enough it's more about working with problems if you work with lot more problems i mean if you solve a few take a database solve a few queries do that for 5 7 different days i think you should be good enough to start as a data scientist that much only that much sql is required in data science if you know more if you are an expert in sql that can certainly add value right for data manipulation for other task it can it can help you but if you don't know it there are other ways to do it okay then tools like r programming tools like python programming 
Okay, these are also important tools. Now, why I'm talking about only R and Python? Why I didn't talk about Java, Vika, SAS, SPSS? There are multiple tools available to perform analysis of data. Why are we focusing only on these two tools? They are open source. Okay, two reasons. Uh, more than open source. Open source again is an important uh, pointer there. These are open source tools, which is they are free to use. And since they are free to use, the more important part here is uh, that these two tools are used in about 85% of the projects. Okay, I'm sorry, there's a lot of distance from somebody said, can you use mute? Somebody's child is, is uh, saying something. Please, guys, if you could mute, that will help. Okay, 85% of the projects today are handled in. 85% of the projects in the industry today are are handled in these two tools. Okay, so when you are trying to get into data science, data science, if you know not if you have the knowledge of both R and Python, 85% of the openings you are sure you will get a chance into, right? And I think initially you can focus only on that. The rest 15% is others. And say if you are from deep into finance, SAS can be helpful. Otherwise, SAS is not used. The use of SAS is receding day by day, right? People are not using SAS. It's a paid tool. It's a uh, it's a very heavy heavily licensed tool. So people don't want to use SAS. They're using R and Python prim primarily. Okay, because these are open source, free to use tools, and they're 85% of the projects are done. Now, what the reason is? Uh, the question arises: Why 85% of the projects are done in R and Python? There must be a logic to this, right? See, so for, they are statistical language. Not all of them. Yeah, so R primarily is a statistical tool. R was built for statistical analysis only. The good part is R has 10,000 plus different libraries. I'll talk about library and function. I'll just answer one more question here. So R, when you work with R and Python, there are 10,000 plus libraries, which means there is a lot of pre-written code, right? Now, 10 years back when you were, if somebody was working in data science, uh, the hiring used to happen with for MSc statistics, PhD in statistics, those people were hired 10 years back or people from, you know, uh, top notch, uh, top notch institutions in India, at least uh, forget about outside for now. But in India, these people were hired or people in uh, people from top notch uh, institutes, uh, either IITs or, or you know, uh, top B schools, they were hired into these positions. And why that was the case? Because it was not easy to work with this, right? B, B school people are focusing on the business side. These people were focusing on the technical side of it. Now that divide is also kind of, you know, shrinked. It's not that technical is a separate thing and in business is a separate thing. A data scientist works on, on, on the entire pipeline. Okay. Why it is, uh, it is that, uh, that that's now we are able to hire even a person with two years experience in data science or even freshers are also hired in data science today why is that the case because when you work with r and python there are so many libraries so much of code has already been written which is freely available to everyone that you don't have to do the analysis you don't have to worry about writing in a thousand line code to perform a task a one line of code is enough to do the analysis. Okay. Are you able to understand? So if you have to do, say if you have to apply a specific model on data, it just needs two lines of code. Those two lines of code can perform any kind of model on your data. To write, if you are writing say 100 lines of code, that might be enough to do two projects in, in R. Okay. That should not be very basic code, but imagine, you know, 100 lines of code with 100 lines of code if you can you know solve an entire project how powerful that language is you can you can get to understand that right so the reason that these tools are used because statistically r is the best tool in the world today okay even python is not that statistically that sound python is pretty good for data handling right so while implementing the the implementing during the time of implementation Python Python works a touch better. Like therefore, Python has come up strongly in the past two three years. And Python again is not a data scientist uh, tool, right? Python is an end-to-end -end programming language like your C, Java, and others. 
specific part of Python, specific libraries of Python, again, some of which have been taken from R, are used for data analysis. So you don't have to learn Python entirely. You need to know basics of Python, say this much, and then you need to focus on this part. Majority of Python you don't have to learn. Okay, so somebody who is from a non programming background should not worry about getting into programming in data science primarily because you don't have to write a lot of code. If you understand libraries, libraries is nothing but a set of code, set of functions. Library contains set of functions. So if you include a certain library in your code, those functions are available and uh, you can just call that function. You can use that function to perform a task. To explain this, I'll just use the help of Excel. So people from non programming background, don't worry if you don't know any uh, programming. In, and even if you from IT field, if you have not done programming for ages, don't worry about it. You can still become a data scientist. Okay, so if I say I've got numbers say, Just remove this. So I take These are the numbers, right? Now I want to find the standard deviation of this numbers. Okay, that's what I'm, I'm interested in. So if I have to work with Excel, what I do, I'll just pass the formula. Right, and I've called this function. Now this function is performing this task. Did I worry about how standard deviation is calculated? I only need to needed to know what STDEV function means, what kind of arguments that function will take, what kind of inputs will it take, and when it gets give you certain output, what do you mean by that output? Correct. That's what we are focused on. Do you realize that here? Yes. So when yeah. you work with yes. data science, when you work as data scientist, you don't have to worry about programming. Programming will be required. I'm not saying it is not required. It's not as straightforward as Excel also, but it is pretty similar to Excel than to programming. It is pretty close to, uh, pretty close to Excel uh, when you compare that. So if you know very basic programming, say if you have written one or two programs in your life, you should not have a problem learning data science. Okay, so that much very, very, very basic programming is required to get into data science. You don't have to become an expert coder. There was also one one of the myth that you need to be expert coder without having the knowledge of programming. How will I become a data scientist? The reason is you don't need to know it. If you spend 50, 40, 50 hours learning R, if you, you know, 30, 40 hours of live training we do if you spend 20, 30 hours on your own, that is more than enough for you to get start to, to you know, know 60, 70% of how R works. And with that, you can easily move forward. Okay, similar with Python. Now, should you learn Hey, Kush, uh, are you still talking? Uh, I'm unable to hear you. Yeah, I said now you're able to hear me, right? So I said, yeah, yeah, um, yes. yeah, I said when you're working with the R, should you learn when you're trying to get into data science? Should you learn R or should you learn Python or should you learn both? What is the take in that? R will be good for that. R is good. R is good, okay. Okay, see when you are trying to get started in data science, um, I always suggest earlier say two years back. I would I used to suggest go for R. Okay, do you if you see my videos two years back, you will see that I've categorically said work on R only that is enough to get started. But in the past two years, the scenario has changed, right? Um, and why it has changed primarily because the industry uh, for implementation purposes when you work with big data and stuff. Python becomes a more important tool, right? Now, there are a lot of people out there who know both R and who know Python as well. When you go out there, you need to compete with both of both these people, right? You don't have to compete with only R or only Python, correct? If you want to compete with people who know both, plus yeah. there are projects which use R, there are projects which use Python. Now, if you say I know only R, you are kicked out of this. If you know only Python, you're kicked out of this. Now, how much effort is required? Let's try and see how much effort will be required if you really try and learn both of these. So if you have to learn both of these, 
uh, at least in the initial phases i mean to to assess 50 60 percent level about one month of extra effort right one month of extra effort can get you the other other language as well which will be enough for you to get started in these projects in these projects and when you go for a job you can say that i know both so why don't we just put in one month extra effort and get ourselves those extra jobs so suppose this is the pie that is available some is for r some is for python a bit of it is for both uh, why are we focusing only on uh, only on one why do we leave out the others right if you just try and put one extra effort about 40 50 percent of extra jobs which you might lose out on they get opened up for you so my all suggestion now is just be with it you're doing things in a flow learn that one tool extra for about a month once you're good with that you can easily uh you know open up more opportunities for yourself right and more of most of us are trying to transition there so let's let's go there as well prepared as we can be right we don't want to miss out on chances where we could have done better correct so it's just yeah, yeah. one month of extra effort that can get you this so i always suggest go for both of this it will help you many folds fine so you need to know learn sql basic r and python other than this uh, in terms of tools you also need to learn at least one data visualization tool okay so what is data visualization tool it's more like whatever analysis you do right now it is very very important for you to create a story out of that right to create a story and present to your business because when you are sending out your analysis your uh, business people don't understand uh, uh, the business people won't understand how uh, you know what the equations are what do you mean by that they, they won't have an idea of it right they're not statisticians so or they they don't understand they have not read statistics like you so for you for them to be able to understand what you are trying to tell them you need to be able to create a powerful story right so there are specific jobs for data visualization also but as a data scientist if you know visualization well if you can create a story if you can put out your analysis to business in the correct way that will open up a lot of channels that will open up a lot of opportunities for you to uh, to get a much better job okay so this is something which will add a significant amount of value uh, in your profile okay when i say significant so if you see there are co uh, there are requirements only for tableau also right but we also say that okay only tableau if you know you are in the reporting side of it if you know okay how predictive modeling is done and then with that analysis you can interpret that analysis and and create reports or you know showcase uh, those analysis to business make a lot of meaningful insights out of it that is something which can add a lot of value to you your profile right so that is something which will be important this is more expected again from people who have a lot of experience because you'll you'll know business well so the interpretations could be better because the interpretations will come more from the business side than from a technical side clear so i'll just quickly run through this this is the slide that i talked about are we clear if you want to can just have a quick look at this All right, let's talk about the other important skill set. So I've talked about two things. I've talked about domain. I said that is very important for people or that is important for people more than eight, 10 years experience with less experience. Don't worry about it. Uh, programming the SQL, the uh, visualization tool that is important for everyone that you cannot miss out. You'll have to learn it. Learning that is easy. It's not difficult. You can easily learn it. Okay. Now the other part is statistics, which is the worrisome part, right? I'm sure a lot of you have not learned statistics or not seen statistics for ages, at least for the past uh, uh, five years, ten years. You know, a lot of people with different experience. You'll, you've not you've not seen statistics for ages, correct? Maybe not in engineering, not in your uh, current uh, working yes. environment. Yes. So this is something which which we all are, you know, worried about, correct? So understand these things. I'll tell you what all statistics you need to know how how you need to know that and how will we teach all of that. Okay, so let's focus on that one at a time. First thing is within statistics. There are three different kinds of statistics that will be learning or that you need to learn. One is descriptive. The other is inferential and the third one is machine learning. Okay, 
I'll not talk much about this. I'm I've already said that there's an entire session which is dedicated to this part. I'll still touch upon this a bit. Okay. All right. Uh, then uh, then you have descriptive and inferential. Uh, so what is it and and what why it is required? Let's just quickly touch upon this. Paridhi again. Paridhi has already joined us for the upcoming batch. Um, so Pardi again, you can tomorrow session can can add more value to you than today's session. If you still want to be here, I'm okay. Okay. Uh, so Pardi has joined the September batch for us. Sorry, November batch. I'm sorry, November batch. Um, okay. Coming back here, statistics part. Yeah. So I was talking about descriptive statistics. What is descriptive statistics? Descriptive statistics is something that you do on a day-to-day -day basis. We all of us use it, not to a great extent, but still we use it, right? So finding mean finding average you know we have uh, we must have read about standard deviations we have uh, understood about distributions of data this all of this we have we've certainly read in our uh, class 6 7 10 12 somewhere we must have seen this right all of this the descriptive statistics the mean median mode the standard deviation the kind of distribution the data follows it is primarily about being able to summarize a data set Okay, so you want to take a data, summarize all of that into some logical, uh, logical conclusions. Okay, if you want to do that, that's your descriptive statistics. Clear? Fine. Now, why do you need descriptive statistics? What is the purpose of descriptive statistics when you're trying to become a data scientist? Right? That question arises in everybody's mind. Why do you need to use it? So, if I am learning something, there must be a logic. There must be a use of it, right? So if you have heard of the term exploratory data analysis, how many of you have heard of the term exploratory data analysis or EDA as it is commonly known as? I'm just scribbling through. Okay, yeah. Exploratory data analysis or EDA. Have you heard of the term? No. No? no? Okay. Let me just no. tell you this. Okay. So no problems. Don't worry. So when you talk of exploratory data analysis, basically what happens when you take a data set, right? It's not that the data is good enough to create a model out of it. Right? It's, it will not be that you have taken a data raw data from some system and you just directly apply a model and you get the output. It will not work that way. If you try and work with that day in with, with in that way, what will happen is if your data is is bad. The predictability of your output will be. Will be poor. Correct. And do you do you want to predict values? Suppose you as a business are able to predict values only 50% of the times correctly. Would you want to use that model? No, right? If your model can predict 50% of times correct, 50% of the times it is wrong, right? So yeah. there's no point using that model because I'm, I'm going yes. to be wrong most of the times, right? And that will happen if your data is not good. Okay, so whenever you have when you work with data data, I mean whenever you work as a data scientist um, quality of data will play an important part. Okay, quality of data will play an important part. Now it's not that we'll get a good quality data, but we can always improve the quality of data. Okay, and how do we do that? There's some voice is coming and disturbing. Okay. Okay, I think we're good now. It's not echoing from somebody's side. I think that somebody was trying to join in. Are we good now? No echoing? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. You just mute yourself. Uh, no echo will happen. So uh, I was trying to tell you that the quality of data will decide the quality of your output. Now it's not that you'll get good quality data all the time. The quality of data can be poor as well. But before we know, before we analyze, until we analyze that data, how will we know the quality of data is good or bad? So the first thing that whenever you get your data is ex whenever you get your data, the first thing that you do with that data is you do exploratory data analysis or known as EDA. Okay, what does it mean? It mean that it means that you try and explore each variable. Let's take a simple example. I should have taken the data here, but no problems. Uh, let's take a simple bank data. Okay, where I have data for uh, uh, individual. So. Say data for 
his salary age um, his uh, years of experience job profile and then based on that you are having some out some some other information how has he been good customer bad customer something right type of customer okay suppose this is the data that you have okay now if in the salary data there are a lot of data which is missing okay imagine there are a lot of data which is missing for salary if you try and work with this data and then on this basis you try and predict some value will that output be good enough no right no if you don't know the data you trying to predict something based on you know that the data which is missing again you will have a problem right so whenever you do exploratory data analysis it primarily means you are trying to understand two things one how each of the variable is so you trying to summarize this so what is the average salary of the individuals right how many people have got extreme salaries right okay suppose you again there's a very good example to this when you go for an mba college admission this showcase that the average salary is 20 lakh rupees correct or 15 lakh rupees per annum right a lot of people do that when you get in the college when you come out of it you get a package of only about 8 lakh rupees now you feel cheated about it correct why did that happen because you did not nobody told you that out of that 15 lakh average which is happening that's primarily because 20 people got a or 15 people got an uh, offer outside the country and they were getting the money in dollars and their average salary was about 1.5 crores so that added about 3 4 5 lakh rupees into every individual in the class right so average package was still 8 and 9 or 10 lakh rupees but you ended up considering that to be 15 because there were extreme values right so that leads to a lot of misconception in your in or or a mis that that is a misleading value yes or no so if you want to have this data you don't want to mislead your your output right you want to make sure that exceptions are not considered there can be an exception right in your data set Sim other example could be you take a player right a player scores very good every time he comes out to bat right or a player scores very i mean most of the times he does not play well in one innings he scores 100 another five innings he does not score anything after five innings again he scores 200 runs but that player is is not a consistent player right your average would kind be 40 but that player is not really performing as you want him to be yes or no that can be a misleading data are you with me so whenever you trying to understand you don't want to have extreme values these are also known as outliers in statistics um you can try to explore the quality of data so when you do eda you try and create a lot of plots so what is the distribution of this data okay you try and understand distribution you try and understand relationship between variables okay so for a given variable you can create histograms you can create uh, box plots you can create qq plots um if you have two variables you can do qq plots uh, bar chart lot of different kinds of you know analysis you can do when you draw such things it is you are trying to explore the data you are trying to understand a few things about the data by exploring it okay primarily you want to summarize the data see if you can infer something from that second thing you want to understand the quality of data at this point in time clear what is exploratory data analysis why do you use it descriptive statistics is used to do this exploration are you guys with me understood sir understood nothing is bouncing here right everybody is fine should not go into only two or three people said everybody should be able to follow this yes any question at this point in time you can ask me i'm more than happy to answer we are good okay i'm considering we are good alap following alap again is a reference yeah. student yeah okay okay yeah. good thank you chalo let's move on so exploratory data analysis is what is required whenever you do the analysis so this will help you understand the quality of data and that that you will be able to do with descriptive statistics okay then comes inferential statistics let's just focus on this inferential stats what is inferential statistics and why do we need it again so as the name says inferential means you can infer from the data 
it will help you make inferences. So when you create a data model, when you have applied the uh, algorithm on data, what would happen is you would get certain output out of that. Right, a certain output statistical output is what will come out when you apply a machine learning algorithm on data. Now, what is the quality of that output? How good or bad that output is? Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, so how good or bad that output is? What is the statistical significance of that? What kind of variables are important? Which all variables should be dropped? A uh, lot of those analysis, a lot of those interpretations will be will you can do when you work with inferential statistics, when you have understanding of inferential statistics. So one thing I told you about being able to in interpret. Sorry. Being able to interpret the. Um, output. Okay, second thing is when you work with inferential statistics, you need to understand about the population data. Now, what is population? What is sample? I'll talk about it. Right? So you basically are concerned with having to know how population data works. Um, but and you want to figure this out from the sample data. So you want to infer about population. I'll just say infer about population from sample data. Okay, that's where inferential statistics comes into picture. So making inferences about a population about a population from a sample that's inferential statistics within that you have various topics hypothesis test t test z test ANOVA uh, covariance right lot lot of these these things correlation multiple topics estimations a lot of that are there right let's try and understand this now what do you mean by population in statistics how many of you know what is population in statistics basic population I'm sure everybody knows It is a sample of data. It is a sample of data. Okay. See, there are two different things. Population is different and sample is different. Anybody has any idea? You want me to talk about it? So it is with the people uh, with whom you have done a survey. No, no. No. Okay, let, let me try and tell you this. Sir. Okay, let me try. Let me try and help you. Okay, see when you talk of population in statistics population primarily means the entire data set that is in question. Okay, the entire data set in question. Is your population now what does it mean when I say entire data set? Let's take an example and understand this. So for example, I am interested in finding uh, average price of uh, two BHK flats in Pune. This is the requirement. Okay, I want to know about average B price of two BHK flats in Pune. If I want to know about that, should I take data for five flats in Pune or should I do I need to have data for all flats, all two BHK flats in Pune? What will give me the output? All. all all flats in Pune, right? All two BHK flats in Pune. If I have, then only I'll be able to know uh, what is the average price. But do you think so they, they might be say just taking a random number 10 lakh flats in Pune 10 that 10 lakh two BHK flats in Pune. Okay, or at least five lakh whatever number you want to take. You can take any number. Now, is it possible for you to take uh, that many data? Is it possible for you to get data for all two lakh flats? No, sir. Or one lakh flats. No, right. This entire data that we are trying to work with. This is my population data. Now, but in 99% of the problems, you will not have the population data with you. Population data is not there with you. If you don't have population data, then what will happen? If you don't have the population data, you try and draw a sample from the population sample is nothing but a subset of the population. Okay, it's a subset subset you understand a small part of the overall set. So from the bigger set, this is the bigger set. You draw a small set. You can draw multiple subsets also 
and that is called sample. You will analyze the sample and based on the analysis that you do from sample, you will try and understand how the population would behave. Okay, you would try and infer about the population from the analysis that you do about the sample. Is this statement clear to everyone? Population sample, two things clear to everyone. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, good. Let's move on then. So when you are working with data science, you need you cannot have all data, right? So we need to be able to interpret things. That's where this becomes important, which is your inferential statistics, descriptive statistics. I already told you what it is. Now we need to be able to create a model out of it, right? That's where machine learning comes into picture. Uh, again, machine learning will just touch upon this that there are various kinds of machine learning algorithms that you have. What you need to learn in machine learning as a data scientist, you need to know what are the different algorithms that you use? How do you use that? If you get a certain output, what is the interpretation of that? If you feel that the output is not good enough, how do you improve the output? Whether there's an overfitting in the curve, what kind of relationship exists, whether it's a one dimensional or two dimensional or multi dimensional relationship, so on and so forth. There, there are different kinds of things that are that are part of it. I'm again not touching on this today. You can attend a session in depth tomorrow on machine learning and you'll have much better idea about machine learning. But machine learning is an important aspect of data science because that's where the output comes from. Okay, I'll touch tell you only about this much for now. Okay, so when you apply as a data scientist knowledge of statistics knowledge of programming tools one data visualization tools and uh, the story building part right you should be able to convey a story and uh, if you are a lot of experience if you have a lot of experience then the domain part if you know this much you will be able to apply for a data scientist job and you will be able to get a data scientist profile are we good till this point uh yes a few Definitely. questions on the descriptive and uh, referential statistics. So Go when ahead. we say descriptive, uh, uh, when we talk about EDA, doing EDA, mm -hmm. do we do a kind of detail analysis or just a sanity check is enough? So for example, no, so you, you talked about Go ahead. one guy making 200, yeah, one guy making 200 in one inning and then mm -hmm. uh, score much in next 10 innings. Uh, but it is still a real time data, right? So, uh, what what do we arrive out of this? That's no, no, so that's you, on the what, descriptive. What you, uh, what, okay, so what do you try and do? You try and create a so, distribution of those numbers. Once you create a distribution, you'll understand. Okay, as as time has proceeded, how the value has been, how many times he has scored zero or less than twenty, right? That right will now. that will help you infer something out of that. Similarly, how many hundreds has he scored? Okay. How many consecutively he has done? I mean, there are a lot of analysis that can be done, right? So, initially, you are trying to do a quality of, I mean, uh, at least when you start, when you start, right, taking a problem, you first start with basic analysis of data, do an exploration, understand the quality of data, and then once you feel a little confident about it, then you move to the second step, which is more about in depth analysis. Okay, but you start with the quality of data. Clear? Okay. So this okay. few myths, yeah. myths I just talked about. I'll come back to the other things. This is clear that this is a myth. These are two different things. Data science is all about learning R and Python. That's also cleared now that this is incorrect. You need to be an expert programmer as a to work as a data scientist. That's also a myth. It's not required because you already have a lot of pre-built code, right? Um, these things I need to have worked on data science. Okay, this thing also I've kind of talked about but i'll just come back to this let now just focus on these things which is more about transitioning to data science right these parts these questions are more towards the transitioning to data science part let's focus on that part now that how do you transition to a data scientist profile okay all right now again the transitioning can be for uh, different sets of individuals the transitioning would happen in a different way be very clear about it uh, for different people with different skill sets, the transitioning will happen in a different way. This, what I'm so showing you here is, is a generic thing. On top of it, I can talk about what is, if your experience is less, what if experience is in the, in the, you know, in a mid zone and what if your experience is high. I can talk about that individually as well. 
so give me some time i'll talk about that also okay let's just focus on this first so when you are transitioning to data science make sure whether you are a fresher whether you are two years experience whether you are five years experience whether you are stuck in your career and don't know how to move it is important it is very very important that you not just learn data science uh, it is pretty important that you solve real time cases when i say real time cases real time use cases the data might not be real time but the problem should be real real time use case problem okay so a simple problem can be as simple or you know can be uh, a real time problem a lot of you can be can will be able to relate to this so if you're working on say support projects right and you have tickets coming in okay uh, suppose there's a there's an organization where daily about 2000 tickets come into the bucket right and now manually it's difficult for somebody to you know keep segregating those 2000 tickets into different buckets so what has been done there's a machine which is installed uh, uh which which does that right say so some rule based machine which does that now it's not able to perform well right if you can bring in some kind of in machine learning into that and make the machine work pretty well say achieve a accuracy of 98 99% a uh, lot of those tasks which are which are having getting stuck because the you know tickets are into wrong buckets a lot of that problem can be solved right that that's a real time use case right now it's it's not that uh, you would have worked on this use case but if you know that okay this kind of use case exists and for a support project something like this can also be there where machine learning can be applied and and you know if you showcase something of this also in your profile that that adds value are you able to make sense of what i'm saying i'm saying it's not about solving end to end projects it's not always that you know most of people who are transitioning to data science have not done it when i say not done it means they have not really had a chance in their organization to work with it because if they were doing it why would they transition to data science yes or no if you are already working as a data scientist what is the purpose of transitioning right yeah those people would not want to go out there and you know put a profile there so very and earlier if you take two years three years four years back very very few people were actually doing that right at least in india so when you go out there people understand that you've not really worked on this you're only you know might have worked it for a year or so uh, and then if you showcase that much experience well that is also enough but it is imperative it is very very important for you to showcase your expertise in data science and how will you show that you know things in depth how will you know showcase that you know things in depth by showing experience right you can show talk about things that you have done otherwise how would i believe you have done worked on something so the, the three four steps that you need to take the first step that you need to take is you need to learn things in depth okay don't do superficial learning of data science again i'm saying be very clear about it if you learn data science at a at a you know superficial level say java i, I know people you know java.net they just read a book uh, they say i've done this and they you know it's a theory question that is asked you know more or less standard questions you you answer them you get a job correct a lot of times that happens in data science you will not get a job that way be very clear about it okay if you really want to get a good job in data science you need to give yourself uh, you know uh, give you uh, yourself 6 to 8 months at least and you need to be you know you need to work hard in that time frame if you are if you work hard for 6 to 8 months sincerely work on things learn things in depth you can very easily transition to data science okay again i'll talk about how different experience things will vary but first of first and the foremost thing is you need to learn things in depth solve a lot of use cases right the more cases you solve the more business problems you solve um, the better is your chance of getting started in data science okay the more more and more business cases you solve the better will be your understanding about how data science actually works if you can and then in in an interview also you'll have a lot of content to talk about right when you go out there in an interview the interviewer is understands what kind of confidence you have how much content you have in your resume right if you really want to put that there you need to solve projects so when i say projects i am talking of use cases the you take a case end to end case right don't take part of a small case take a, take end to end case try and solve that case okay how that will done that that is different part will talk come out come to that but uh, it is important that you you solve projects because that will give you a lot of content for your resume 
that will give you a lot of confidence that okay i know data science you give me a problem i know how to solve it right and that confidence is very very important when you're solving problems okay so this is very very important now second thing is now you might be working in say xyz field right try and see if there can be a bridge which can be created from your current profile to data science whether that is through uh, your data analysis part your sql part your programming part your um, domain part irrespective of whichever commonality you can find in your current profile and data science find that talk about it okay showcase that in your profile okay so so that is something which will again help you why will that help you why will the because see and when you when you put up your profile for a data science position imagine i know that you're working as a dotnet developer but if you can say i was a dotnet developer then i was working on specific things say a bit of reporting within my project there was some reporting requirement that i did and then somebody told me that only reporting is not enough you can go and get into a predictive analytics domain and i started learning data science i solved a few projects and now i'm somebody who knows predictive analytics and solved a couple of projects now this profile will be will be more suited to a interviewer or somebody who says i'm doing dotnet and now i am a data science developer data scientist which one do you think will will make more sense this one right or this one so the reporting one first one right first one will feel that there is a logical transition that is happening right you're not somebody who's just come out of the blue and said that i uh, you know i know data science right so it is imperative it is very very important that you showcase try and build a connect again there's an uh, entire team at our end which helps you do that but uh, you know telling you what needs to be done what we do is a different perspective we'll come to that in a while okay so projects will be very very important solve as many projects as you can at least 4 to 5 will be there if you do that that will take a bit of time be, uh, understand learning things solving projects is a time taking process right but that is where the depth comes from right once you have the depth with that confidence you know you might not get 10 calls you might get 5 calls but those 5 calls is more than enough for you to get to convert it but if you have written 100 things and if not really solved it you might get 50 calls but you might not convert even one and so it's important to talk about depth okay so this thing is clear second thing i talked about is this so use whatever in your purview whatever you're doing if you feel that it is difficult for for somebody to attach your current situation to data science try and maneuver a path okay we'll talk about that now uh, participate in a lot of data science competitions uh to enhance your chances to getting a job right why is that important so see there is there is no certification body in data science right so there's when you uh, i have seen a lot of people who are say ms in in data science or who are doing a a degree course in data science but they still don't get a job okay and they have they spent a lot of money right so whether you do a course for 15 lakh rupees or 12 lakh rupees or 5 lakh rupees multiple people are offering such things but do you want to be smart enough and learn things in depth and and you know solve few projects spend couple of months and get into the job or you want to you know go for a degree and then then get a job so there's one way where which is a smarter path where you work on project okay i'll just do this here so there's one smart thing that you can do okay i want to learn things in depth i want to solve a few projects and then get a job the other is i want to get a degree and i feel a degree can get you a job this does not work well in data science primarily because even if somebody comes out there and interviews you if you have not really learned things enough in a lot of depth um you will not be given there are there are a lot of data scientists out there right who claim to be data scientists who have learned data science but are not getting jobs i'm not sure if any of your friend is in that that area but there are people who who fall in that bracket bucket okay and why do people fall in that bucket because they have just somebody has taught them okay you know you do xyz things and that that is enough but they have never gone back and and done the dirty work you have to do the dirty work for 2 3 months that will instill a lot of confidence in you okay are you with me so take the smart route don't go for just for a degree a degree 
course a degree in data science is invented in the past two three years there was no degree course in data science for the, say five years back in india we did not have three years four years back right because people feel that there is a need for data scientists so okay let's start a degree course in data science take any institute out there they're doing that correct because they feel there's a brand name and they can attract students just because of the brand name i would suggest you to take a smart decision i mean you go wherever you want to do irrespective of wherever you want to do the course with but it is important to learn things in depth a, a, a certification in data science does not hold any value okay why a certification I mean, when i say does not hold any value it does not hold a significant value okay why is that why am i saying that a certification in data science does not hold a specific value or a significant value anybody has any idea on this no okay no, no yeah gosh no okay see what happens is when yes, you sir, go for certificate a... doesn't show it uh, doesn't yeah, prove anything actually uh, the no. resume proves what you have done the projects and all that like this okay no so so that is one thought process that's correct more than that see when you say you are a sap certified professional right does that hold value it does right when somebody is looking at a profile and you say you are a sap certified that holds certain value right or you are an aws certified professional right do you get a aws job job in aws if you are aws certified are you preferred or not you are a preferred candidate race why is that happening because aws or sap is a product based thing or it's a tool based technology right you learn the tool you showcase that you have learned the tool the certification comes from a globally recognized body correct it's a sap aws these are globally recognized right or a big data certificate that you get from cloud era right or hortonworks again that's a product based thing right you understand this so that certification has value because there's an industry body which is certifying people in data science you have nobody who can certify you when i say nobody there is no governing body out there if you don't have a governing body any certificate that anybody gives you is from his or her institute or you know whatever you call it so if you're getting a cert certificate in data science whether they say it's a globally valid certificate ask them which industry body is certifying this can you name that governing body which has given you this uh, with which you are associated with they won't have an answer because there's no body out there which is certifying you on data science if there is no body what is i mean you take a certification from a you take a certification from b you take it from c does not uh, does not matter okay more than that if you if you they do it from some if you know some kind of an uh, certification from from say very very reputed body um, unfortunately we really don't have a reputed body in data science um, that you can you can you know i mean when people go for ms degrees in data science right outside so there that still recognizes it still recognized because those universities have been conducting data science courses for 5 7 10 years that's popular there to to an extent that still has some value in india i don't think there is anybody which actually does it in in depth okay so that's that's uh, one of the reasons why I, I always say that it is more if if you have solved work, participated in data science competitions there are a lot of competitions which happen on which happen on kegel on crowd analytics on on hacker earth uh, the multiple platforms right analytics vidya con, con, conducts uh, some competitions if you participate in these competitions if you do well in these competitions um that that is a much better that's 100 times more effective than a certificate in data science okay so few things I'm, I'm trying to tell you is because I, I just want to make sure that you you are in the right track okay and and then it's important to to build a good resume where you showcase your expertise and not just put a few lines in your in your resume try and create you know whatever coding you're doing put that online on github or bitbucket or r pubs or jupiter the multiple platforms where you can have a profile you can showcase that this is what i've done provide the link to that write lot of blogs where you say what it is and, and you understand 
you know what you have done if you can do those things that can add a lot of value to your profile okay so just don't build a resume where where you say okay i've done this try and you know work a little more on that create a resume which is which is attractive enough for the other person to 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 look at and and you know talk about it okay so he should be able to shortlist you based on the kind of expertise you have so if you he sees he or she whoever is is shortlisting sees a a logical trend in the profile that is there he sees a, okay this person has done a lot of good projects this person has shown his github profile he's is talking about things so the chances of you getting shortlisted will be much much higher than somebody who's not done it okay so so those are the things which will be more important okay let's just come back to this one more thing uh any other uh, this so this degree i told you this is not really very important this is not adding value this was msc in statistics or something uh, phd in statistics was a lot of important thing but that was say again five seven years back five years back at least that was that had a lot of value even now it can, can consists of values it, it has values but that's a two and two year three year course which you don't want to do as a working profession so that that would not be a smart decision to take as of now okay uh, do you need to work in data related technologies no right i told you irrespective of where you are you can transition based on how the profile is is uh, maneuvered okay do you need to know everything to get started i told you you cannot okay let me just touch upon this also you cannot learn everything on data science right so big data is a different technology data science is a different technology data analytics i'll just put it as data science then um, artificial intelligence is a subset of it right this uses a lot of machine learning so when you get started in data science it is imperative it is very very important rather not to get into everything don't try and get into everything what you will do is you will you know try and learn this 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 and it will become a khichdi here you'll not really know because and it, you need to learn all of this it's not that you don't need to learn all of this but you need to learn this in a step by step manner right take one step at a time learn things see how much you have learned move to the next step right so on if you move ahead in that order you will find that it is so much more relevant okay you will find a lot of relevance in that case otherwise what will happen if you try and learn everything in 3 months or 6 months um you now people are able to teach you everything in 3 to 4 months uh, it's very difficult i don't know uh, how you will be able to you know take up everything it's not feasible because until you do a lot of hands on in data science it's not going to sink in okay it's not really going to sink in so you need to do a lot of hands on and you need to learn things in 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 a sequential manner okay so first you need to say focus on uh, machine learning once you have good with machine for machine learning you need to know okay I'll just draw this here so you need to know stats r python at least one of this right then you can be good enough with ml once you are good with ml then you can go for a uh, deep learning course or ai course and then you can go for Okay, a lot of disturbance from somebody. Said. Can you mute yourself? Big data analytics profile. Okay, so you can first start with this. Once you're comfortable with that, do this, then move to the other things. Okay. All right. Ah, uh, okay. I'll just last five minutes. I'll take and then I'll take up the questions that you might have. Anything else I missed out here in the conception? Okay, certified data science. I talked about that also. That is not something that is important. You can. You need to learn things. in in a step by manner that i have already talked about let's quickly see what is our offerings and uh, what is it that we offer and uh, how do we offer that and then uh then i'll quickly open the floor for questions we can take up or or all questions you might have okay uh all right so now what do we do we do only online instructor led live sessions we don't do classroom trainings primarily because it's we don't see uh, we see that there are a lot of problems when you work with uh, a classroom based setup you have to travel you'll have to you know uh, spend time there if you miss a class there's a problem you the classes are not recorded uh, when you have doubts again there are problems so uh, and over a period of time right you need to learn take about 6 to 7 months at least for for you know for you to become an expert in at, at least in in data science r python ml to to expertise in that at least 6 to 8 months is required and you you cannot it's not that you'll not miss a class in 6 to 8 months you will be missing a lot of sessions a lot of at least 2 3 4 sessions you'll miss in that period so it should not happen that if you miss a class next class is also bouncing out right 
so so for all those issues that we have faced while doing classroom trainings two to three years back three years back we were also doing classroom trainings but there are a lot of hassles out there i could not move out you cannot move out you know you have to be in a certain place so uh, seen you know, having seen all of those things we decided to move online and we we really realized that this is much much better than a classroom based setup okay and we the best part is that now we are able to cater to anybody and everybody irrespective of where you live in the country or in the world you just need to have your internet you are traveling to your hometown for some vacation but you still can attend the classes you don't have to worry about things right so and I, I also don't need to be in in a, in a particular place to teach you. I can be around. I can move to Delhi, Pune, Bangalore, you know, for for different projects, and I can still be able to teach you well. So there are a lot of those things that really were very very important there. So we do only online live trainings. We don't do classroom training. That's one. We have multiple courses: data science with R and Python. We have deep learning and AI. We have big data analytics and NLP. We don't suggest you go to go for any other course until you are very good with machine learning. Okay, so here I'm talking about data science with R and Python, which is the uh, most of the people start with this course and then they go for the other courses with us. So this is the most important course that will do. This again is an in-depth course. It's not a you know basic course. It's an in-depth course in data science. But yeah, it does not cover deep learning. It does not compare cover uh, big data analytics because we know that that itself, if you learn have to learn deep learning or big data analytics, that's another 80 to 100 hours of effort, bare minimum, right? And to be able to do that, you need time. So you cannot learn everything in one go. So data science with R and Python, it's a 200 hours of live sessions. Uh, we do 10 hours of live sessions every week, and we take about 20 weeks to cover everything. Okay, 20 or 21 weeks to be precise. There'll be a break also. So 21 weeks uh, to cover this entire uh, entire course in depth. Okay, what we'll do in those uh, course, what are topics? I'll talk about that. For now, just understand there will be 20 plus different case studies you'll be solving. There'll be cases on R, there'll be cases on Python, there'll be exploratory data analysis case studies. You'll be working on uh, specific cases to see how much you have learned each of the topic. In machine learning, for every algorithm, you'll be solving at least two cases in the class with the trainer. Because if you don't do hands-on, you don't. Uh, if you don't do hands-on, you don't learn data science. It's pretty simple. Okay, it's as simple as that. That if you don't uh, do hands-on in data science, you don't learn. So you have to work with the trainer in the class, and that is very very important. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, then the timings that we follow. So we do 10 hours every week, as I mentioned, on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. You do one hour sessions every day. So total, you do four hours per week, and these are the timings. Either you can do in the morning. Or in the evening, we give you two time slots for the weekdays because we understand somebody might be working, somebody might be busy on a given day on client calls, and so many things happen, right? You have some personal commitments, so you are given two chances for weekdays to attend the sessions. For weekends, it is only one, which is on um, on uh, on Saturday and Sunday, 9:30 a.m. to 12:30 p.m. So every week you do 10 hours of live classes with the trainers, and uh, we are able to teach you in depth properly. Okay, and you do that for 200 such hours. We have done a couple of hours till now, right? So you can well imagine the kind of content that will come your way, the kind of depth that depth that will come your way. Okay, what all we'll be covering? We'll be covering descriptive, inferential, R, Python, ML with R and Python, Tableau, SQL. All of these is covered in the data science with R and Python. Okay, this is entirely live classes. We don't believe in giving a lot of recorded sessions only for SQL. We have recorded sessions. Everything else is live. Once you're done with that, you work on um, in during the course, as I mentioned, you'll be doing 20 different cases post which you'll be working on multiple projects, at least four to five, preferably from the domain that you are working with, right? That will help us create the bridge, right? Uh, the connection will be simple, will be smoother. Then why uh, well, you can take dimensionless. Okay, it's highly very highly interactive sessions. We allow you to speak in the class. Uh, today we are talking more. We are, I'm asking you less questions in the actual class. There'll be more questions which are asked. We don't take more than 20 people per batch. That's the maximum. Okay, a lot of hands on highly qualified faculties. Uh, we are expert data scientists working in the field for about seven, eight years at least. Okay, then uh, the support after completion of course there'll be recordings there'll be assistance 
assistance placement assistance um in okay placement assistance i'll come to that okay recordings of all the sessions all the sessions are recorded recordings are made available to you uh, through our learning management portal and you have an excess lifetime you can always you know always go back and see the videos that you are attended or that you have missed also in placement assistance i'll talk about that and uh, there are multiple projects that you work on there's a snapshot of our learning management portal uh, there's an online lab that you can work with uh, then okay now in terms of placement assistance i'll just touch upon that part so what do we do so we have a specific team what what that team does is uh, they will uh, so first you work on projects right first you learn things in depth so you do hands on in class okay then you work on projects on your own the projects that you'll be working on each of the project is discussed with you so you will be solving the project you'll be telling us why you did something right so discussion on the projects will happen for every projects two plus hours of discussion will happen with the individuals right so there'll be about four or five so at least 10 plus hours of live discussion will happen you will be defending what you did why you did that right and what we do is after you completed six weeks of 16 weeks of training right when you're comfortable with most of the things we start giving you projects right so that every two three weeks you can have a discussion and by the time you do you're done with six seven weeks you have done with three four projects and then there's a specific team a career assistance team right which will take care of uh, take care of your resume they'll help you with your resume building correct they'll help you how exactly the you know the projects need to be put up um, what our projects have done how comfortable are you what's your previous profile they'll map your profile to companies they'll understand what all have you done so on and so forth they'll talk about a lot of those things right so they'll have individual sessions with you they'll ask for your profile uh, about after about a month of your joining uh, if you join us so they'll uh, they'll ask you for your profile they'll understand it in depth they'll map each of the profile see what all you are doing what kind of projects you'll do so they'll give you projects to solve right what kind of projects you should be solving and then they help you put that project in your resume once that is done uh, the team that we have right i am uh, i am there himanshu is there umang is there the other people also through our connects in the industry we have developed a referral channel through that channel we help you get placed into various companies okay we help you get placed into various companies through those channels so they'll be an end to end assistance not not just to make you learn first learning is important then execution and then you i you know the portfolio thing is important resume building projects portfolio once that is in place then you keep start applying so that's how we try and cover the entire pipeline okay uh, and uh, yeah just give me one minute i'll take up the question just one oh, minute okay yes guys i'm more than happy to take up your questions anybody has a question about this you can answer that i mean i'll be more than happy to answer that tomorrow we have a session uh, tomorrow we have a session on uh, machine learning uh, it's an in depth session on machine learning i would request you to attend that session you'll get a lot of insights from that that session also okay so machine learning i have not talked about deep learning i have not talked about much but yeah that is something which will be uh, important yes guys quickly anybody has any questions i am done from my end on indian holidays whether classes will be taken indian holidays see either we do it on in the uh, like if someone is allowed so ah, okay okay so generally what we do is for uh, weekday suppose i mean generally indian holidays i mean we we don't follow a lot of holidays diwali is something there we obviously have a break that's where so the batch is starting from 12th number because after diwali a lot of you will be back so that that's what we try and follow um mostly otherwise the, the sessions happen either early morning or late evening you have a chance to attend you know both the days so mostly what happens we don't we don't face such issues if you have a lot of people say that you know we will not be able to attend it you have problems then we obviously try and uh, try and accommodate for that 
but uh, generally we don't try and you know push things a lot i missed to join from starting of this so could you please share the recording will be present on our website uh, in a couple of days you can always uh, see the recording this recording will be present on the website in a couple of days you can always uh, go through that yeah so i have uh, a question hi go ahead one at a time okay i'll just take the name and then you can go ahead yeah kavita go ahead for now yeah uh, if i am missing uh, one of the session is there a recording available so that before the next session i okay. can go through the okay. recording I, 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 i have mentioned that after every session all the sessions are recorded within 2 to 3 hours the recordings are shared with you uh, for all the sessions so that you can go back and revise if you miss okay. a session you'll un- that recording yeah. is there even if you attend the session right so that if you want to revise also you should have something correct okay yeah. so all right uh, saurav any question you had yes uh, so uh, yeah my question is uh, like uh, for weekdays you have mm-hmm. um, uh, showed that uh, there are two uh, timings one is of morning Correct. and uh, another is of you can attend any one today you attend morning tomorrow you attend evening i'm okay with that okay so we can uh, interchange according to the you can certainly interchange okay there's no problem with that right no problem with that we see the idea is to make sure you attend classes right i mean i am putting for for um, say how much effort 200 hours of effort actually becomes 280 hours of effort right yes. but so for that 280 hours of effort that i'm putting in the idea is to make sure that you don't miss classes i mean somehow we are very very lenient on that we we don't want you to miss classes that's why we kept kept two different timings okay, okay. and for Now, the entire course you will be training us no uh, there will be other people also there will be himanshu who is an it bombay uh, pass out again 11 years experience in the industry he'll be taking he might take tomorrow session on machine learning he's uh, better than me mind you he's better than me so you'll you'll find him even more interesting so that's okay but uh, there, i think there can be uh, other faculties uh, there can be other faculties uh, as well yeah what, what i'm trying to tell you is that whatever faculties take your session they'll be more than competent enough to answer any question that you have in the class we are not like that this question i don't know i'll i'll, I'll not be able to answer every question will be answering in case something that is out of the box we can always say that today we don't know tomorrow we'll check it you know but uh, all the questions will always be answered okay okay thank you uh, okay there's a question is the fee negotiable to be very honest the kind of effort that we put in 200 hours of live training it is actually becomes a little more than that plus on top of it working with your projects discussing your projects helping you get placed uh, and on top of it there is 18% gst included in 35000 rupees so what we get in our pocket is less than 30000 bucks uh, so it's it's not really you know feasible for us to to have any discounts we only have a referral policy if more than one person join if you know if two or three or four people join together then there's a referral bonus that you get other than that we don't have and if you if you are friend suppose you are referring somebody even after one year of course completion so for example you know somebody's friend comes up and joins that person will get a referral bonus so that policy we have otherwise we don't have any other policy we don't offer discounts we not somebody who says that the fees is 5 lakh rupees or 1 lakh rupees and say you take 40% discount and the fees become 60000 no we have kind of put it to the very optimum that you we can put in and that's because again that that's not the idea to to mint money here the idea is to keep it going uh, kush yeah. uh, i have one more question uh, like you have told us that uh, after the completion of course uh, after the completion of course uh, so uh, we will start the project so how much time uh, uh, we will get to complete those uh, see it's 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 more see generally people are if you since work on that sincerely it will take 3 4 weeks so if you work on say if you do three projects also right at least that much you should do so that there is a content for resume right so yeah, yeah. depends on how how much you effort you put in if you put more efforts you will be able to do that earlier if you put less effort you'll be able to you'll need more time but generally what we do we give you 2 to 3 weeks where after which we say okay let's discuss this project if you say i'm not done it can i showcase next week it's fine with us but then you you are getting delayed in applying for jobs right so there's a process where we try and push you to do things uh, and and try and make sure that you do at least 3 projects over a period of 2 uh, uh, months 
So generally we get uh, three to four weeks to complete the uh, project. Yeah, yeah. Aram, Aram, so that time will get. You, I mean, you can see it's not that we are running away. If you come back and say that I've done it after two months, still there'll be discussions happening on that, right? But that much time is lost. You understand that point that you that much time is lost. Okay. Okay. Wasim has a question. Wasim says that he's uh, 2.5 years uh, working on working on something. No. So, sorry, sir. I have a gap of 2.5 years of uh, academic gap after 2015 pass out. Okay, hold on. So I I have read the question. Yes, so in 2015 pass out, I've had the 2.5 years of gap. Uh, will this gap cost me in getting jobs after competition? See, to be very honest, uh, it's not a six month or one year gap, um, which can easily be justified. You've spent a certain amount of time. If you have been working hard in this time frame and you've been working for something, and uh, you've decided to take some other course in your life, you know whatever you are pursuing. You can always say that I was trying to do this. That did not materialize. Does not mean your life ends here, correct? You need to take another course and you need to get ahead. Uh, you know, whichever path you feel is comfortable for you. So you can always talk about it in a way that you say I was doing this, I did this, and then for some reason I was working on this, which I could not do. But there, you there has to be a genuine, uh, you know, genuine talk there. It cannot be a, a storytelling that you do. If you're able to convince the other person that you actually were working hard and you know a lot of things but you're not able to get through and now you feel this is this can take up your career and you want to change your directions uh, you know showcase a bit of experience showcase about you know basics that you know uh, talk about that but it 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 will not be very straightforward as straightforward as somebody who's already working it will be a touch difficult from them but it's not impossible there are people i've seen who can who who take uh, you know uh, and again, in your case, it will be a smaller companies who will prefer you more than a large, you know, bigger organization, because bigger organizations have a lot of options. Smaller organizations have comparatively lesser options. So they would also want they would want to attract talent more than the uh, more than the uh, what do you call it the profile. So they are more interested in the uh, in the talent. If you really showcase that you understand data science well, I'm sure. At least there'll be enough companies out there who can who can uh, take you. Okay. Uh, there's one more question coming up. I'm planning to join from January. Do you some issues with current project? Yeah. So if we start a batch every every other month, hopefully. So you can join us. Uh, join us uh, through that, right? So that's not a problem. So whether you want to join in January or December or February, that's okay. 12th of November is when we are starting a new batch. There, in that batch, we have I think about uh, 13 odd registrations are already done, uh, whose money we have already received. The few people who said they want to register but not paid, so I'm not considering them for now. Uh, yeah, Kush, I have a question. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, I am currently working. I have been in the claims industry for last 15 years mm -hmm. and I am 37 year old. So okay. uh, the only reason I wanted to, you know, understand more about data science is because I'm seeing a lot of these things in LinkedIn. And also that I'm just, I'm doing a lot of Excel reporting, not the, you know, not R, Python or anything. I'm not mm -hmm. into That's all okay. those things. That's yeah, okay. only basic Excel reporting. So do mm -hmm. you think this course is for me? I mean, after uh, okay. pursuing 15 years in the claims industry, okay. in a okay. completely different uh, industry, and then moving mm -hmm. into this thing? Okay, so I'll just talk, talk about this. See, when you say you are working in the claims industry, you're 37, you said. Now, five years down the line, when, when these tools take over, where do you stand? You tend to lose, you stand to lose your job. Or, yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah, that, that's one, one of the very pertinent questions that you need to ask yourself. If not that, um, you might not grow. That is kind of sure. If you don't lose your job, you will not grow. That is for sure. Do you agree with that? That's yeah. one question. The second other problem is that whatever you're doing, don't think this is the... okay. A bit of disturbance, please mute yourself. Yeah. The second problem uh, that will happen is it's not that uh, you are moving out from what you're doing. It's not that you're going to say, okay, I am. I have become a data scientist today. That's not the way you will put in your profile. Give me a second. This. So that's not how you will put in your profile. Rather, 
what you will say is I am somebody who has been working with data. I understand Excel. I understand reporting, but now I'll also do predictive modeling with the data. So how many claims do you get in a month? What kind of claims this, that those will be right? How you will uh, you know what kind of claims are fraudulent claims? There's a lot of you know analysis which is happening in that particular area Kavita. So if you can do such cases that can actually propel your career into a very different direction. I'm I know it will it will not be you know a just a flip there, but those things if you know that will certainly help you grow very fast. That's one thing plus you will you will really remain very very relevant in the industry. So I, I certainly feel it will add a lot of value to profile. You need to understand how predictive modeling can be used in your case and if you learn it as I said, you'll have to put in time and you know with your age. It's not that bad that you you cannot learn it. You're still 20, 37 people 45 years old, old also have come and learned with me. Um, the learning is a little slow. I mean when you become too old, but uh, I, I don't think it's it's too you're too old to to worry about that. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, answers uh, your question. Right? Hello. Yeah. All right. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Kush, I just want to uh, know, uh, do we need to uh, have some specific software or tools to uh, do a self service uh, self learning kind of thing after the sessions on our assets? No, so R and Python are, as I said, freeware tools. Tableau okay. public is freeware tools. Um, even if you don't learn from me, if you want to learn it on your own, you can download those those tools from the internet and start learning. You don't need a okay. person to make you learn these things. The problem what happens is again, I'll tell you with my personal experience because you've brought this point further forward. So what really happens is that you said that you want to learn data science. Okay, and you I told you statistics is important. Uh, you know, programming is a bit important when you try and do that. Now you every now and then you get stuck with things a very simple you know, uh, thing I, I the lot of very bright students who come to me and learn with me, and I, you know I have discussions with them. Recently, I was having a discussion. So this one lady, she said, uh, "Kush, I was not really sure I wanted to join this batch, and uh, you know, um, but somehow I just thought that it's not a lot of money. I need to put in five thousand bucks initially, and I want to see whether it, it makes sense or not before I join in." So I, I said. But it's okay. But how do you feel now? Where do you think that there was a difference, right? Do you really feel a difference on your own learning and and the way you could have done it, uh, you know, with us? So she said one thing is what I could do on my own in five days. Now I'm able to do that in one day because there is there's somebody who's teaching me on a regular basis. Whatever doubts I get on a day-to-day -day basis, if I'm stuck on something, so she was trying to learn decision trees on on her own, and she was stuck in a very simple problem, and she tried that for a week. And she still, you know, she started uh, with data science. She's doing data, uh, the machine learning on her own because she's she's very eager. Like I'm, I'm telling you, she's very very smart. So she was trying to do that, and then uh, uh, she was stuck in something. Now, when she said, uh, "Okay, Kush, can you give me half an hour of yours? I just want to discuss that." We sat there for 15 minutes, and the problem was solved. Now, what she could not do in seven days was solved in 15 minutes because she did not understand what how to proceed forward with that. So when you get stuck, you end up losing a lot of time and over a period of time, a lot of enthusiasm is lost more than the time. No, you will lose the enthusiasm. And if you keep missing, if you lose that over a period of time, um, you know, you, you don't reach out anywhere. Again, I'm telling even when you learn with me or with anybody else, you have to put in efforts. It's not that your effort is not required. You need to put in six to eight months of hard work will be required to become a data scientist, but that will become six to eight months will be will will be enough to do that and you'll, you'll the learning will be very fast and and good in depth learning because you you know that what you need to be learned how it needs to be learned what i need to not focus on and and you know how to proceed with that that's where right. you know people like me can help yeah i understand that my only point is that after this uh, online session that if you want to practice you'll at have, our end i just thought that you'll have, we you'll have enough to like you have software or tools You'll have tools. You'll have. We'll will help you install each of the tools that you need in your system. Okay. Okay. Don't worry on that. Yeah, no, I mean because you brought it, found it. It was an interesting story. So I just discussed. I hope uh, nobody okay. minds that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. I have four year experience so far. I'm. Uh, I switched to three companies. Okay. So we know that's not a good idea to switch every year. Uh, uh, so you, it's not that you need to switch after. Uh, you know, uh, within from your company after learning data science. Yeah, I'm not sure what's your profile. 
you said four years but four years into what is something that will help me understand things uh, so if you can let me know on that that can help and otherwise uh, that's that i to be very honest i know that's not a very good idea to switch every 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 year but uh, since you've done that that's okay um, you're working with testing right so if you're working with testing again it's not very close to data science but seems like uh, just because somebody was giving you a better package you thought let me jump jump the ship so what i would suggest is uh, you should try and learning it you should you need to learn data science it's not that you i mean testing again is one field which is which is not a very certain uh, which does not have a very certain future right people in that field would understand that it does not have a very certain future so if you want to get into that field if you want to spend some time move out of that and you know make a career in something else testing can be a good uh, sorry data science can be an opportunity there can be other courses also that you can look up to choice is yours right you need to decide what you want to do in your life again big data is not for you because that involves a lot of programming in your case you're not doing programming so this is not for you but it could be data science it could be aws it could be cloud some there, there can be so many things right you can decide what you want but whichever you decide and uh, make sure that you learn in depth um, you might uh, you know start applying after eight nine, nine months ten months one year down the line and you you know you you'll need sh need to show a bit of transition so uh, I would suggest you you learn things because you know learning it's not that you will be able to learn everything in six months so then you have to wait to apply you need to if you have reached a certain level you can move to the next level learn more things work with more problems and you might start applying after eight nine months ten months when you are in a position to apply and then you can easily crack interviews so my suggestion would be don't don't hold back because you have a thought that you want to transition um, that again reminds me of a thing that what happens generally is in your life you you get a chance right you're working in your company and then you someday you feel the urge that you know this is not what i want to do i want to do something else and uh, you you think about it you try and you know work on it and you don't get a good output or you know you don't get a good uh, you're not sure of it and then you procrastinate it okay let me do it after some time and then it it gets procrastinated for a year for two years three years data science is one field if you procrastinate now you will uh, you will repent big time so if you want to learn it if you want to get into the field the time is idly now right the more the further you delay the you know the posture are taken by somebody who is who is learning it so um, the suggestion would always be that try if you want to make a career in something where you want to go get there you know get started in that the earlier you start the better it is for you right the lad lot of relevant experience lot of expertise lot of chances of jobs all of that will happen okay make sense so uh, kush uh, just an extension to this previous question uh, i am also Sorry. in the testing field but uh, mm -hmm. currently working in uap so i have a okay. lot of uh, interaction with the business people and uh, uh, that will happen out of this I, yeah so uh, my question is uh, will it be uh, will it be possible to bridge uh, to make a bridge certainly uh, correct uh, correct so domain in your case domain will act as a bridge domain will be a very important yes. bridge for testing people yeah. so right. you can talk about in because you, you, you talk you talk about business process you try trying to create use cases uh, where the system can fail right so you understand that business part well and then you do that uh, you know that can certainly be leveraged okay thank you okay all right any other further questions let's take one or two last questions and then we can okay go at shubham yeah kush yeah kush uh, actually uh, I have just I have just started my uh, started my career. Actually, I have uh, I have passed my graduation. I just graduated in this year. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, and now my domain is the BI. Uh, okay. I'm working. I'm uh, currently working with the BI tools. Is the BI OBI? So, okay. OBI. As, yeah. As just told, told us that the DS DS is another part. Data science, data science is another another thing, and data analysis is another thing. So. Mm -hmm. If if I just started to learn for the data science, so, mm -hmm. so is there necessary that I have to put some some part of uh, some part of months in the D D A and then no, start, no. I have to start D S? No, no, no. Okay, okay, I get your point, Kush. So there's a question again. This is a myth um, that I'll break. So a lot of people think that I need to become a data analyst first before I become a data scientist, right? So that's also one of the Actually, questions. Your, your voice is breaking. Okay, my voice is breaking. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, but yeah. and now double okay i said see there's a myth there that uh, you need to become a good data analyst before you can become a data scientist 
so that's not yeah. always true right as a data scientist you're doing predictive modeling but as a data scientist you also have to clean the data you'll have to do the reporting so it's an extension of profile why don't you start working as a data scientist and work on the end to end thing rather than restricting your restricting yourself only to the um, you know the the reporting part of it correct and i mean okay. since you you passed out this year um, you would know right companies are hiring big time even freshers right so people with less than one year two years experience are being hired the hiring that is happening in that case is also on the basis of uh, uh, on the basis of the projects that you do right so when you go out there and say i know data science um, now i don't have to worry about you know because you're pretty fresh right so you, the package is low you have a bit of uh, you know bit of expertise even if your knowledge domain is low there's a chance that i might take you because i might need some some people in in that bracket also but most of my people will come from 4 to 5 years bracket okay i mean just think the average experience would be in that but it's not that you will not get a job there are openings in your case also and people are offering much better salaries for a data scientist profile so if you can get started with that that can give you a good push to your career making sense shubham so it's not that yeah because that that's something which has been doing people have been doing for 15 years so that's okay if you know about it parallelly you can you know read about it that's, that's nothing wrong in that but yeah if you can start as a data scientist that will uh, give a further boost to your career okay uh right i have a question sandeep there sandeep reddy i remember seeing one mail from this person San- sandeep same person right you dropped a mailers asking about online or classroom training same person some of the name got stuck sure okay. one more thing okay go ahead uh, if if i just if i just go start in, in some queries we doing a uh, queries in the big spots in the big days and uh-huh. so so uh, and to to solve those queries we have to discuss only in the live sessions or we can put a mail uh, you can pop up okay how how would we help you you have whatsapp groups you have uh, mailers you have my contact number you have uh, okay. the team's contact number you have email id uh, i might not be able to help you then and there i'll say okay i'm avail- not available right now i'm busy in a meeting or I'm, i'm traveling or something but i'll say okay let's sit in the evening today and you know spend half an hour and, and clarify your doubts okay so your doubts as i said you, your doubts will not remain doubts doubts will be sorted irrespective of where whenever they come from right don't worry on that so yeah fine okay there's a question in terms of how has been the placements from dimensionless uh, in the past so as i said uh, you can read reviews from uh, from our students you can just check that online the other thing that i would tell you is that when you uh, talk about the placements the okay, placements ask. yeah let me just uh, talk about it so uh, when you talk about the placement part all those students who have been sincere who have been working sincerely who have uh, put in the efforts and done the projects uh, i don't remember anybody who has not get got placed it might uh, have taken a little extra time for people to get placed so recently there's a guy who got placed uh, after about 8 uh, months of course completion but uh, that that person was still you know working on things and he got a very good salary after this he is about 10 years experience and uh, he's able he was able to transition after 10 in 10 i mean even after 10 years experience he was able to transition to data science it, it took him as i said it, it did not he got not get a job in 3 4 months uh, he got a job after about 8 uh, 8 months of course completion and uh, but but his his salary package was you know much better than him, what he was expecting because he, he, in those 6 8 months he was still learning things and there's a lot of depth that he acquired so he was able to leverage that also in the interview so uh, the placements have been very good i would not say you know that everybody got placed no that's not the case if you don't put in effort if you don't i mean we'll we'll push you to do things to work on projects to solve problems we'll push your cvs around but if you don't put in efforts it will not result in things though all those people who have been sincere and worked uh, you know worked with us on hands on and in you know in the projects all of them almost all of them have got placed I'll have to check if there's somebody who's still not placed okay that answers your question akash yes sir thank you sir okay uh, any further question one final question if you have or else i'll just leave i think it's uh, I've been speaking for two and a half hours now it's uh, the throat is giving way 
हेलो हेलो जमंदर बोलो एक्चुअली राइट नाउ आई एम वर्किंग इन कैप जेवे ना है ओके ओके सो आई वांट टू मेक अ करियर इन डाटा साइंटिस्ट uh so uh what i'm thinking i'm thinking i will i will uh do job in uh, job in data scientist uh, uh for for one year then after that i will i will do uh, my masters degrees in data scientist then again i will work there so i want to know your opinion on this no that that's that's a wrong uh, thought to have because okay. when you when you okay just mute yourself there's a bit of background noise yes. okay so why do you want to go for a master's degree there must be a reason to it right either you are trying to create a product you're trying to work with uh, you know algorithms in depth now the good part about is the problem happens when you get started right you don't know about it so when you have already you you learn data science well you put in efforts to you know 6 to 8 months effort you put in you learn data science you work as a data scientist for about a year once you have done that now a lot of other things you have learned right now you know don't need to focus on a data science ms degree see don't worry again i've told you don't worry on degree degree is not going to help you it's just a, a certificate which says okay you have done something but if you are actually working on something and if you rather than doing that if you solve you know take up a deep learning and take up a specific uh, Uh, you know applications of data science if you try and work on those parts that can add far more value to your profile right so i don't think ms will help you but if whatever experience you have that's good enough that's okay you you try and learn data science now in depth uh, because in, if you go for an ms also you'll you'll spend a lot of money right and that's not really going to give you that much benefit you can i was mentioning that right do take a smart decision why do you want to throw it all the money in and then end up at the same position where you are rather than why don't we just you know upgrade ourselves learn our things learn things well and then with that skill we try and uh, ask for jobs or you know ask for a better package so that is that would be more uh, more suitable than uh, uh, because a practical expertise is, is so much more important than than a ms degree again get out of that mindset of degree thing being very honest there okay fan of mandar make sense Okay, I think he some problem there. Yeah, I'll ask you. Yeah. How this field uh, would be? I mean, uh, if somebody is enrolled into this field, do you see uh -huh. good and well in this field? Okay, what is the future of data science? Is that the question? Correct, correct. Yeah. As a okay. career. Okay, as a career. See, when you why are we talking about data science? Again, a very good question. I'll just talk about. I'll just talk about this. I get your question. See, okay. Why are we talking about data science today? The problem is that the existing tools and technologies that we had, the existing amount of data that we had, was not enough to solve business problems. Correct? Whether it is IT companies or you know, now we are trying to improve the efficiency of the processes, for which we are trying to say, okay, let's automate few things so that the things become, you know, the quality of things better, uh, you know, become better. for example in in your manufacturing companies you have got robots right man when you humanly you do things you will make error robots won't make errors similarly you trying to make machines perform tasks so that the errors that that are there that reduce the efficiency of the processes improve correct now the next 15 20 years we will we'll try and do that across the board and data science is a is a is not a tool based thing it's a science right you're trying to implement automate things across board whether you are into finance hr marketing uh, you are well, part of healthcare domain part of operations supply chain irrespective of where you come from every industry is using data science and we have only started applying that into different problems as we move further in that area the the kind of problems will become complex the kind of requirements will become there and and there'll still be you know next 15 20 years this this field is only going to grow now if there's a wave coming up which which can take you to the next level would you want to take that that wave or would you want to leave it smart thing is you take that wave and move to the next next thing right you grow with that wave that's what you try and do correct so that's where okay. it's, it's very important that i mean that's why i say that right? it's the time to do now the further you leave or procrastinate okay do it after 5 months after 1 year things will go out of hand you will be left behind 
from other people who have already started that with you or already before you you need to learn things learn things fast and catch those people right people who are learning on their own they started two months back you can easily beat them after five months they'll still be halfway and you are done correct so you you need to think it in that way all right right yeah thanks thanks very yeah. much yeah. No problems. All right. So I think I'll stop here. My my throat is really paining now. Uh, appreciate your being here. I hope all of you were able to add. I mean, I was able to add value to you. Tomorrow session, try and attend. Again, I'm saying it will add more value to you, and uh, we can take it forward from there. Okay. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, bye bye. Take care. Thank you very much, Kush. Thank you. Okay. Mandar got off. Okay. Was he saying something? Uh, no sir thank okay. you okay those who are good can, can drop off that's okay those who are good can drop off uh, uh mandar you were saying something i don't know you dropped off whether you were able to listen to my answer that i gave you mandar shubham kuch bol raha hu hello hello kuch sir yes mandar mandar just a second just a second mandar yeah yeah ha shubham kuch bol raha ho kya So uh, yeah, yeah, Kush. Kush, one thing as we have just told that we have to go, we have to cover all these things. We have to go step by step. So first, we mm. will cover uh, from this uh, data science with the R and Python. Only then only this thing will be for the needs or two hundred. Two hundred hours of live training is data science with R and Python only. That's not that does not include deep learning. That does not include uh, uh, big data analytics. See, if, uh, you, you need machine learning. Machine learning is part of it. Data science with R and Python, you cannot become learn data science without doing machine learning. If somebody tells you that I want to teach you data science without machine learning, that person is fooling you. Okay. So you see, the maximum effort is on machine learning. Seventy hours of out of two hundred hours is on machine learning, because that's the crux. If you don't know that, you don't know data science. Plain and simple. Okay. Thanks, good news. Yeah. Okay. Mandar, quickly. Were you able to listen to the answer that I gave you, Mandar? कुछ सुनाई नहीं दे रहा है काम करना. Point of view. अच्छा मेरे को सुनाई नहीं दे रहा था कुछ भी क्या बोल रहा हूँ. Let's do one thing. You can, uh, if anybody has a question, even after this, you can call me on these numbers. You can double nine two three is one where which I have now. This is a company's number. You can call me on that. I'll I'll be able to help you. Okay. All right. You're not audible. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. All right. Logging off, guys. Thank you so much. Bye bye.